so starting out, uh, this is the um, OKD working group meeting for November 9th of 2021. Don't forget to put your name in the attendees list so we know here. And uh, we'll do a quick agenda review. Is everything in the agenda? Anything that people want to change or add uh, while we've uh, got it up before we get started? Going once, going twice. All right, then let's jump into it with uh, release updates uh, with the Dean. Um, first of all, can you hear me? Because my mic is kind of yes. weird. Yes, yep, we can hear you quite clearly, yeah, or I can. Um, so this weekend we were supposed to have a 4A to release, but um, it's kind of postponed because uh, the rebase to 121.5 of Kubernetes and Kubelet and things didn't land just yet, so it's going to land today. Uh, so we kind of skipped this release because, first of all, we didn't have much uh, to fix and for it. Uh, second issue on the table is uh, for nine. For nine, nine at least already uh, for at least the testing, and we would need to switch to for nine stable eventually. Um, I think the safest way would be releasing 4.8 this weekend and releasing 4.9 as stable the the weekend after. That gives us quite enough time to test 4.9 at least. That also approximately at this time, OCP upgrades would be allowed from 4.8 to 4.9. I think they are allowed now, but probably blocked by something at least. Um, we don't see a huge volume of that. When that starts happening, we would have quite a good results of the health of 4.9 and uh, OGD is safe to move. Uh, next on, uh, Mustafa has fixed the storage test in uh, Kubernetes. All cherry picks have landed in master 122 and 121, the, the branches we care about basically. They didn't land in uh, micro releases yet, but once they do, um, OpenShift will rebase on top of them. We'll get these fixes and we would finally be able to unpin the Linux policy uh, package, which has been causing us quite a lot of problems. Well, rather, it's been way too secure. And um, another problem has been found in 4.10. Rather, it affects Technically, it affects all uh, the installations, but it's most visible on 4.10 because uh, AWS M6 family is using a uh, Nitro uh, hypervisor and it's crashing on latest kernel 5.14. So you won't be able to launch latest Fedora Cross. Uh, once you launch uh, 4.9 or 4.8 using this it would crash in for m6 but uh, m5 would work and unfortunately for 10 has moved to m6 by default because these machines are actually cheaper and so far the mitigation is that we rolled back the kernel to 514 you would still have to use an older fedora cross due to this issue and some more previous ones but in the end it uh, starts correctly so that's what we're testing right now um it's uh, it appears to be an actual either AWS issue or upstream most likely upstream kernel issue. So not much we can do until we wait for the fix to land. Um, I believe the the interested parties are notified identified the upstream bug report. That's what we'll do um, if this issue won't get resolved. Um, GCP is known to be working fine, but it appears to be affected at least AWS and vSphere, I don't think it would be, um, it would be affected. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I don't think there's been a uh, new changes, but again, um, Fedora Cross testing develop has moved to 35 and I would really be interested to try this out, but the kernel problem is uh, at this point blocking it. Once we would push it away and would be able to fix the Linux policy pin, we would rebase for 10 to a 35 and check out the results. Yeah, I think that's all I've got. 
Any questions or comments for uh, Vadim in the OKD updates, OKD release updates? All right, seeing nothing, we'll move on to the uh, FCOS updates with Timothy. Yes, so hi everyone. Um, so I've got two items today. The first one is that uh, with Fedora 35 released, we are now moving to Fedora 35 for Fedora Core S. So I've put the link into the document with a link to the tracker of where we are right now. And so Next has been on Fedora 35 for a while now. Uh, testing is either just right now or just going to be in Fedora 35 in the next one. I don't remember. And then we move on to, next, uh, to stable in two weeks. Uh, so testing in, is not right now, so it should be in, yes, right in the next release, which, so with the, um, with the base, uh, with, with major releases, we've, we shift to a new way of doing the releases, releases base, so we kind of accelerate the pace. Uh, so the documentation. Somewhere linked in the ticket, if I can find it again. Uh, so that we do the updates a little bit faster during uh, the move to Fedora 35. But yeah, so essentially it, it's coming really, really soon to uh, a testing release near you and then two weeks next, two weeks after to a stable release. So hopefully that will help OKD a lot because a lot of the hacks you currently have, will you will be able to drop them. So that should help things. Um, yeah. That's on the front of the, on this point. Uh, and then we have a second one, which is kind of like an update of what we discussed next, uh, the previous time about, uh, oh, it wasn't the previous time, it was two times ago, where we're working on uh, creating a way uh, to create layers for core systems. So like for Fedora core uh, you could have, your base system and then overlay on top much more in a much more easier way all the packages you need for example for okd uh, and uh, the enhancement is posted there i have put the link uh, the progress we, we're progressing quite rapidly toward that and uh, support so should be available shortly at least for testing it out uh, until it's fully integrated into the mco and everything and we get fully it uh, we get full Full, the full thing uh, available. And uh, yeah, essentially right now, I think we've got like uh, the ability to do local uh, tools from containers and applying layers and everything. So like the basics should work. And um, hopefully this will like really help uh, for OKD uh, to, to, with the, with issues and everything. Avoid the rebuilds and enable Overriding packages when needed, uh, overriding, overriding things, so changing config, defaults, and everything. So that essentially you just use the base for a first image and then do the, the tweaks on top. And yeah, and that's the two main items for me today for this week. Any questions on the Fedora Core OS side of the house? Questions or comments? Right. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, moving on to uh, the docs updates with Brian and Driti. Actually, I don't um, know if she's on, so it might just be you, Brian. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, the new documentation system is now live. So if you go look, it looks a little bit different. Um, it's now based on MKDoc, so it's pure markdown. So pretty easy to um, update if you want to. Um, I've now put the instructions for if you want to go and update the docs, um, you can either do it within the container. Um, if you've got um, Che 
or code ready workspaces on a cluster. You can um, edit it in the cluster or you can install local tooling. So that's all set up. Um, let me know if you need any help or any issues, but that's all good to go. And there is one issue that I think might be worth talking in this group. Um, and it's an issue raised by Sandro. I know Sandro's on, so I don't know whether you want to actually pick this up and talk about it. Uh, yeah, uh, I stumbled upon a CVE report for uh, OpenShift virtualization last week. And uh, I was wondering if there is any anyone tracking CVE that are also affecting OKD from coming from FCOS or coming from uh, OpenShift or any other uh, layer thing that we are building upon. Uh, so I, I looked for uh, in the website searching for a security contact and couldn't find one. I saw there is a security policy for OKD itself in the GitHub code repo for, of OKD pointing to Red Hat security, but I, I'm wondering if it's someone is actively looking at that. So don't just really... raising the topic. Yeah, no, that's a great, great question. Uh, we don't currently have anyone volunteering to scan um, the security related security issues. Um, I think that's a great idea. Uh, is there anyone in cur anyone currently in attendance that would be interested in doing that legwork like every two weeks or so basically looking for stuff that would impact OKD so that we can um, let users know that we are aware of these things. And if it's something upstream, then we can say, hey, we're waiting for this fix upstream. Uh, if it's something that we can mitigate in the few cases where we can, we can talk about that. So everyone want to be our security liaison. That may be something you want to put out on the Google yeah. site. Yeah. The Yeah, I think we need someone. I think that's a great, it would be a great thing to have someone doing that legwork for us. If nothing else, you know, as far as the OpenShift code base itself goes, um, because it's the same, it's the same images, same code base, those CVEs really could track from the Red Hat site. But Dora Core OS on the other hand, that, that's a different matter. Any, any there are likely being reported to Fedora, but we don't have that, we don't have anything that's tying those together. There's and one exception to that, Charo. Um, occasionally we, or not occasionally, like, you know, semi-regularly we have CVEs come in that we don't disclose through Bugzilla. So they're private bugs that only Red Hatters could see, but they yeah. might affect pieces of OpenShift that those CVEs would not be discoverable by people outside of Red Hat. And I think even for Red Hatters, there's probably some document we signed that says we, we won't expose those things. So I think that's probably the one area where this might be difficult. Yeah, that, that is true. So on the... Oh, yeah, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, okay. Uh, so on the point of contact, I'm looking for the exact URLs and things, but essentially for all core S repos, we have this one security policy on GitHub, which I think we can apply to OKD, which by default says contact Red Hat um, security team and uh, we'll take care of that. And uh, yeah, I don't have... I'm looking for the exact link where this is stored and all this is set up, but I don't remember, and I'll have to find that again. Yeah, that seems like a good default, like yeah. defaulting to giving the Red Hat, you know, address this one. Yeah, that seems like a good place to push people towards. Yep. Deck alert at Red Hat. Is that something Red Hat is okay receiving in that way? So like, speaking for Fedora Chorus, at least, we're perfectly fine receiving that this way. And I think it would, should be perfectly fine for OKD too. Cool. Okay. I mean, yeah, I concur with what Timothy is saying pretty much. Considering that OKD and OCP are actually identical, 
Um, I hope they're okay with it because if they're not, then there's a problem. A bigger problem, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's. Um, what we'll do is, as a task, we'll add um, the docs group to actually uh, come up with a security page that sort of outlines our security posture, um, and then we'll prov we'll provide those two links for people to be able to submit and get info. Um, in terms of uh, FCOS and in terms of OKD. And we'll go from there and I'll send something out um, over the working group. Uh, in the out for security liaison. All right, anything else on the topic of security? Sandra, does that, does that uh, get us closer to, to what you're thinking? Yeah. That makes sense. Excellent. Um, so on the topic two, we have so this one. So this is like the row list of all CVs or all, all advisories for Red Hat OCP. So this one probably also applies to OKD in similar manner, considering that you will have to remove all the real specific ones and add all the federal records ones in there. But essentially, it might be a good place to start. And this one should be full, as far as I know, like Excellent. fully accurate. Thank you. Anyone else have any thoughts on this in terms of uh, getting someone to volunteer security liaison or any of the documentation? Anything else we would we could add to round it out? Any other thoughts? Okay, then uh, Brian, you want to continue on with, uh, uh, I guess we'd be a, a code of conduct and then Twitter and then the survey? Yeah, so um, the, we're looking at adding the code of conduct um, taken from the Ansible, Ansible, group. Yeah. Ansible um, repo. Um, Michael is adapting that. Um, and we're going to actually use that as our code of conduct. Um, and I think the idea would be that, that we could refer to it when we start a, a community event or a meeting. We can actually refer to that and it'll be actually on the doc site as well. Um, and then I think in, as far as Twitter is going, we're looking to set up a Twitter account. And he was well, going Dariti, to... Well, Driti actually set it up, so it is actually... Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, we didn't get a uh, uh, we didn't come up with a good background image yet. Like I think we're using just something kind of. Um, she's been handling all of this. She's not here, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's up. We just need to start deciding on content, and um, so that we've got the one background image that was sort of pulled from, um, like the website. I think it was like just grabbing the website, but. Um, we might be able to come up with something that looks a little bit nicer. It's a little bit fuzzy, but um, yeah. So she did come up with that, and um, I guess the docs group or this group, if you have any thoughts on what type of things we should be um, putting out over this, like do we want to put every release that comes out, you know, Vadim, does that make sense for every single one um, that's an official release that we um, – you know, announce that through the Twitter, um, announce the meetings, things like that. Is there anything else that we would want to put through the Twitter? Do you think? And the docs group, of course, will we'll deal with this as well. All right, we'll make sure you follow it. And uh, I think we'll probably have it start following uh, other people to sort of get that you know, grid going, uh, and we'll, we will start using it, and then folks can forward it. That's the other thing is for social media like this to be successful, folks need to forward uh, and reshare social media. So in this case, if you could retweet the OKD tweets when they start coming out, that would be super helpful because then that builds up, you know, that social media grid um, and makes those connections and stuff like that. And... 
uh, survey. Uh, Driti hasn't gotten much farther on the survey, but it's uh, uh, but she's taken that on, and we'll know more uh, about it. I'll touch base. Right now, it's like 11 p.m. We're getting close to 11 p.m. there. Um, but I'll reach out to her and see where things are. Um, and uh, CRC stuff, Charo, take it away. So I had a couple of free moments, so I built a 4.8 version and pushed it up. That's about all I know that's happening with CRC. <laughs> <laughs> are you getting any feedback from it? Has anyone else uh, played with it? Uh, somebody tried to use the an earlier version of the Linux one that had a um, the the upstream group made some changes, so I had to I had to make a patch and push a new version. Uh, but uh, other than that, I I don't know how much use it gets. You guys use it or not? I I don't I don't use code ready containers. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I see it mentioned occasionally, the OKD variant, um, but it's like maybe once every couple weeks I'll see someone talk about it on a mailing list. That's about it. Yeah. Do we have any any sort of stats in terms of visitors or downloads or does anyone have access to the account that we could pull that off? You know, it's uh it's just a URL hanging off of the OKD.io. Uh, and we're using some borrowed space on one of the Fedora servers, so I can't speak of. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's easily... Uh... Neil, do you happen to know who in Fedora um, gets logs for that infrastructure? Do you even know what infrastructure that is? So dl.fedoraproject.org, which is where it is, is the download master server DLIB01, which is uh, in the IAD data center in Virginia. That is managed by Fedora infrastructure, specifically by the release engineering team. So um, the access to that is controlled exclusively by Red Hatters. So um, someone on the Red Hat side will have to talk to the CPE team. Uh, for those who don't know, that's community platform engineering. Uh, to talk to the Fedora infrastructure subgroup of CPE about if we if there are any stats, if not, if we can start collecting any. Dusty might know who to talk to. I think he's the one that got me access to it. Yeah, probably. Secondary mm -hmm. one dot Fedora project. Can we put that as a to do uh, for either one of you to hunt that down so to see if we can get some stats on on downloads or anything? Uh, even remotely letting us know. I mean, we'll have the survey, obviously. But... Sorry, who, who, are, who are the two people? So, I well, three of you, any, either okay, Neil, so or Chelo, any, or Daniel, anybody, any, yeah. any of the three of you, yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, are any of the three of us Red Hatters? I am. Okay, cool. Yes. Um, so let's start with you, uh, Charo, since you might be the best at figuring out from the Red Hat side um who has access to that and yeah, if you already have access to it you may have log access to um or if you want to decide to delegate that to to one of the rest of us uh and you can get us access to, to do that that's fine too well you know i got access to this machine before i uh, went to work for red hat was, <laughs> yeah this was back Oh goodness! When did we? I guess it was last summer. No, it was it was before that when we when we pushed the first. Maybe it was. I guess it, it was twenty early twenty twenty. Yeah, because uh, the actual OKD four release was um, late summer of last year. No, it's been out longer than that. Nope. You you you're thinking about the COVID year that everybody lost. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing that all day. I've been I've been conflating 2019 and 2020. All <laughs> yeah, I'm oh. talking about the COVID year. <laughs> yes. So does it make sense to spin off the CRC stuff into a separate meeting? I noticed that's been added as an item. 
Can, can so, someone take that on so that uh, maybe the CRC folks can, or CRC so interested I, folks can do that? I had volunteered to organize the meeting last time, and uh, I was actually waiting on you, Jamie, for instructions on oh, right, how to right. organize said meeting. Uh, that didn't actually make it into the task list last time, so that's that's my bad. I put it in the task list this time. Okay, great. There you go. Yes. Okay. If, so there if I if I don't hear from you in like a week. Should I email you, Slack you? What is you the best way? You can Slack me. You can Slack me. You can smack me. You can email me. <laughs> okay. Smoke machine, whatever, whatever it is to get my attention. To yeah, be honest, um, I was busy with enough other things that I wasn't like itching to do this, so that's that's yeah. why I didn't follow up. But okay, cool. It's on the task list now, so hopefully we'll close that loop. Excellent. But, and I apologize. At my day job, I'm pushing a project to production the past two weeks and it's just been um, fun and excitement. So yes, I totally will understand. get you the information and then we will go from there. Okay, okay. anything else on CRC that the, that the whole group needs to, to hear about? Um, so I think the main two things that we'd want from a, from a CRC subgroup to start with based on the conversations we've had here are um, discussions about automated builds and the infra for them and then the larger existential question of does anyone use this, and if not, is it worth right. using? Should it even exist? Um, are there other are there other agenda items that people think are important for a CRC subgroup to go off and figure out? No. And if not, that's fine. I just wanted to ask the larger group before we broke off to make sure that we weren't missing key things. Yeah, you know, Daniel, whether or not people are using it. And whether or not people would use it more with different configurations are sort of two separate questions. Sure. Um, yeah. Does anyone use this, and is it is it worth doing? Are two two separate questions. Thank you. Because like if you if you look at say Minikube or something like that, um, a, a, as a an alternative which doesn't have the same usability. Yep. Um, and you look at the resources that that takes. Uh, then that, that sort of gives you a useful baseline for comparison. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yep. Minishift okay. was so much more compact. Well, exactly. It was a lot easier you know, to run cl Minishift. Cl cluster up. It was, a, it was definitely a lot easier to run Minishift. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a good question to answer. Uh, besides a metric for anyone using it, um the the is there a configuration of it that would make it useful for people to kind of figuring out what the direction of it should be okay cool um that's enough of an agenda to get started i just wanted to make sure that um that that the things people wanted that committee or that subcommittee to do were actually going to be done yeah yeah and and mike your your point is valid it it really is it it runs better when it's running on it. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, this is, like, it would be really cool if you could take a CRC and, like, run it in such a way where it actually installed the stuff on the host machine instead of trying to create, like, you know, a virtual machine to do it in. And then, like, and then you could have a situation where you could just take a bare metal host or just a bare host, run some sort of CRC installer and have it actually deploy to fill the resources on that machine. Like, I think that would be a really interesting use case, kind of going back to the the days of OC cluster up kind of behaviors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool, okay, so that that's um, that's a bunch of good stuff that we can that we can cover in that in that meeting. And yeah, I'm just saying, if you're looking for big fish to fry, you know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but that that looks like a nice big fish there. Yeah. Maybe you'll boil the ocean on the same one time. of these. <laughs> That's what you want. All right, let's move on to uh, any. Are there any issues in the uh, repo that are something that came to our attention that we need uh, to pay any attention to? Um, there, there are those kernel crashes. Uh, Vadim mentioned that. It looks like all of the other issues are very old, so not a lot of issues. Of course, Kai uh, Ramel. Uh, uh, posted something that came up that 
Um, looks like there is a must gather that he posted about seven hours ago. Um, that's someone that we may want to court actually for the working group. He's always, he's actually running OKD in production and is always posting stuff where he's finding bugs and whatnot. Um, maybe I'll, I'll start a conversation with him and see if he's interested because it'd be cool to have him sort of uh, contributing or at least coming on every once in a while. We definitely want to hit him up with the survey. Um, anything else in the issues section of the repo that you want to bring to our attention or talk about? Them? Okay, is there anything in the discussion section uh, that folks want to talk about? Uh, someone mentioned the CRC OKD uh, mismatch, uh, packaging OKD binaries for Fedora. I did not see that one come in. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mike Rocheford is not here, and he's... Yeah, I just noticed that. that. Yeah, that was Mike's thing. All right, well, we will shelve that one uh, to until the next meeting. Uh, anything else in the discussion items there? Generate certificates for old... OpenShift origin. Yeah, I don't see anything. All right, let's uh, move on. A lot of the discussion stuff, it seems to be like just user. Press to resolve here. Um, location of the main repo, Diane is going to check with legal. I need to actually create a um, uh, a discussion item. So for tasks moving forward, and if folks could remind me or help me with this, the goal is to create discussion items for every task, and then this way we can actually track uh, that people are getting their tasks done, and folks can talk about tasks and things like that and, and follow up on them. So my goal is, starting in the next week or so, to start creating discussion items for things that don't already have discussion items uh, related to tasks. So Diane never responded to me. Uh, Charo, did she respond to your internal? No, in fact, she's not. She's not online right now. Okay. So she may right, be well, doing network issues. Or... Yeah. So we'll find out um, about moving the main repo. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, which is kind of a a loaded question, and it may lead to a long discussion or a short discussion. How do folks feel about set weeks for the OKD working group meeting? In other words, the first and third week of the month, or the second and fourth week of the month. Um, this came up, and I'm starting to sort of ease into participating in the GitOps working group. Um, and I asked the question there, and it, it apparently was something they were talking about. Um, and I think it's something we could talk about here. It would be a lot easier to know which meeting between the docs meeting and this meeting, it would be easier to invite people because they'll always know it'd be easier for scheduling. Is there any reason why we wouldn't want to go or anyone have any general thoughts on going to like a first and third week for the main meeting or second? Aren't we already effectively on that? Because it's Not, once every two weeks. Yeah, but you end up, eventually it ends up being, you get out of sync with that. Because if there's a fifth week on that Tuesday, like if the month ends, do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't know. For me, it's easier just being bi-weekly. If I have to go in and figure out how to schedule it for the first Yeah, like it's a kind of a pain to fix forward. that in 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 the calendar. Like I'm, I rely pretty heavily on my Google Calendar telling me I'm about to miss right. a meeting to, to actually join. And doing those kinds of things, those kinds of gymnastics are quite hard. Yeah, and I, I moved mine into Exchange Calendar so that uh, uh, you know all all the other people at BCIT can see it. And I don't think that that's as flexible as you know Chrome Jobs, uh, so that you can do like the first uh, you know Thursday of whatever. So like every other you know like a repeat every other week is something that is easily manageable in all calendars. Jamie, was was there a a, a reason giving 
for for moving to a first and third rather than just the current bi-weekly cadence? So some people have scheduling in their day jobs that are the first and second uh, week or the, you know, or the first and third or the second and fourth week. Some people have, have uh, voiced that as something of a concern. And then the other one is that in those weeks where you don't fall on the first and third or second and fourth, on that fifth week, there would essentially be a break. Uh, and so people could breathe a little bit. Um, but uh, it's, I, I mean, does anyone else have any opinions? It sounds like most folks are into the, into the just every other week thing. That's, and that was the other thing, by the way, the other, that was the impetus is, uh, the, the initial impetus was me actually asking the um, GitOps working group, well, what week is this? Because it says every other week for their meetings. And I was like, well, what does that translate to? When is the next one? So for inviting people, it's problematic. Uh, it, or for, for posting it in such a way that people could just happen upon knowing when the next meeting is. So we would have to, and Mike, I think you just posted something yeah, so Mike just posted something, um, uh, right, putting something on the website and also via the new Twitter and stuff like that. So either way, I think, yeah, we should do that, like put it on the yeah, website. I'm, the I'm kind of curious. Couldn't we just have like okd.io slash meetings where we have like the iCal files like easily downloadable and maybe like just a display that says this week's meetings are like X, Y, and Z or whatever? Yeah. Well, I so mean, we, we, could, we have the FedoCal entry, right? Yeah, the FedoCal so, calendar, you could just like import it. Uh, yeah, the, in, and I, I, page, yeah. The lens so allows to make that can, work. If FedoCal can be configured, uh, you know, the FedoCal set, uh, setup for this event can be configured with whatever way you want, then it's fine because it doesn't actually matter what restrictions everybody else has because if they just subscribe to the, the live iCal feed, they'll just get the events as as the calendar system pushes them. Um, but like, if I have to make calendar events for this, this is gonna be very, there's gonna be some gymnastics involved. Uh, and I don't know if I'm gonna get it right. <laughs> Mike, what were you gonna say? I've uh, just, I've had a poor user experience with the FedoCal stuff. Like it doesn't import nicely to, to my Google calendar for some reason. Yeah, I noticed that as well. All right. I actually well, have on my personal Google account, I have like 20 different FedoCal uh, things imported in. Um, you have, and it works fine. You have to tell it when you're pulling in a calendar event from there, you have to grab the iCal link, you know, so you go to that and say copy iCal link, and then you tell Google Calendar to subscribe from a URL. That mean, That's not the same as importing. Importing from a URL does a one-time thing and then that'll be wrong. But if you tell it to subscribe to it from a URL, then it will actually work correctly. Why these are two different things? Hell if I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe my Google Foo is just weak here. Thank, thanks, Neil. <laughs> All right, so, so is the temperature of the room then that folks want to just continue with bi-weekly, alternating bi-weekly? That's the temperature? Okay, that's what we will do then. Uh, but don't be surprised if we do uh, cancel one of the meetings on either of them, just so that people do have a break. Because uh, Diane sure. and I Whatever. do burn out <laughs> a little bit. Uh, okay, we uh, have about 15 minutes, but we've made it through our uh, meeting items. Is there anything else that folks want to talk about before we break? Do we want to just pre-cancel all the December ones? Because <laughs> like last year we ran up right up to the line and then we decided we were gonna cancel all the December ones. Well, so what do we, let's see, we have uh, December, there is... Maybe we keep the first two weeks and then we cancel. Yeah, well, so, sounds like a plan that we come out with uh, a, a new uh, F class version, major version, uh, a new OKD major version, and then we cancel all the meetings at the same time, right? That sounds like a great plan. Yes. And shut down the website for maintenance. Right. Uh, <laughs> so are we saying 
uh, the 14th through the 4th, no meetings? I'm fine with that. Or do we want to do that the 14th and then go 21st? That's kind of late, though, into December. I mean, if yeah. folks are going to be really busy. I mean, my PTO basically starts on the week of the 12th. So, um, so after that, it's just... And, I, and and my PTO doesn't end until after New Year's. So I I expect, at least from my perspective, I'm personally canceling everything that I'm attending in that in those three last weeks of December. I would say, yeah, that the 21st, nobody's going to show up, and the 4th, nobody's going to show up. Right. All right, so uh, straw poll vote for canceling meetings from December 21st through January 4th. Raise your hand or say aye. Do it. Even if you don't, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to meet. <laughs> okay. Does anyone have an opposing opinion on this or a different perspective? Let me say different perspective. Opposing frames it as. Different perspective on this than what we've just. Anyone? No? Okay. Uh, now, where are we in terms of actually a little bit closer? November. Are folks okay doing the uh, 23rd? Because that would be our next one for November. Is I'm okay? fine with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I will see you all in two weeks. Uh, expect your task list to be created as discussion items. Um, and of course, if anything comes up that you need to talk about the group, you can use the um, Slack. And we have been successful at making the, the dev Slack channel mostly for dev questions or dev discussion, so feel free to pop in there or use the Google uh, working group, uh, uh, Google group. Awesome. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Bye. See you all.